let's take a look at what the newest photos tell us about the B-21 Raider and why it has more in common with the YF-23 Grey Ghost than you might think. Last week, the Air Force released two new photos of the B-21 Raider to the public. Shrouded in secrecy, the B-21 was officially unveiled to the world back in December and has been called the future backbone of the bomber fleet, especially since the Raider is capable of carrying both conventional and nuclear payloads. With a minimum ask of 100 examples, the Raider should start deploying to its primary operating base in the mid-2020s. The Air Force hopes that the eventual size of the B-21 fleet will number over 200. Therefore, it is easy to understand that Northrop's new bomber will play a significant role in the U.S. strategic arsenal. Everything about the Raider has been designed with future expansions in mind, from its open architecture software code to the modular construction methods that are being used. These latest photos clearly show a much lighter coating than we had previously seen in other stealth aircraft. Let's take a deeper dive into what we can learn from these photos. For starters, the image taken from above the Raider shows us the overall layout of the bomber, which is what the B-2 Spirit would have likely resembled if the added requirements for low-level penetration were not forced midway through its development. If you recall, the B-2 was initially designed to fly at very high altitudes, but then a decision was made to include low-level penetration capabilities. This caused the designers to add extra control surfaces and reshape the wing to the sawtooth configuration we know today. These changes came at a penalty to how high the B-2 could fly, along with a less stealthy profile, especially from the rear of the aircraft. However, based on these photos, that does not appear to be the case for the B-21. This means that the Raider should fly at much higher altitudes, likely well over 60,000 feet. Another interesting feature revealed from the photos are the air intakes, which appear to be deeply recessed. This is significant because one of the biggest penalties to radar cross-section or RCS are turbine fan blades found in aircraft engines. These fan blades are vertical to the direction of travel and make for a highly reflective surface for radar waves. As a result, aircraft designers go to great lengths to hide these fan blades from view, usually by installing S-shaped ducts to direct the airflow towards the engine. One example of this is the F-35's dual intakes, which feed the single engine in the center of the jet. There is practically no way to see the Lightning's fan blades from almost any angle as a result, greatly reducing the RCS. However, since the Raider is a dual-engine bomber, each engine requires its own intake. From the photos, we can see that these intakes are very recessed and appear to be covered by removable intake covers. Along with these recessed intakes, we can see a slight hump at the forward lip of the intake, which is similar to other diverterless inlets found on other aircraft. Why is this important? Well, one of the challenges in designing modern military aircraft is solving the boundary layer problem. As an aircraft moves through the air, a boundary layer of air attaches itself to the body of the aircraft that moves along with it. If this layer of air enters the intake of the engines, it can negatively affect performance. In the past, aircraft designers used splitter plates to separate the boundary layer air from the fast-moving free airflow. Generally speaking, more air into the engine equals higher performance. All right, pause the action. Interestingly, the F-22's intakes use a form of splitter plates offsetting the intakes from the fuselage, which is not great for stealth. So to offset this, the Raptor uses radar-absorbing materials along with composites in these areas. Yet, when it comes to stealth, there is a better solution than splitter plates, diverterless inlets. This is usually a bump near the intakes and can be seen on the F-35 Lightning. And get ready for this, there's another method. In the case of the YF-23, gauzing panels were installed in the fuselage just ahead of the air intakes, which, along with a pair of small doors on the YF-23's upper surface, removed the boundary layer air. This system was automatic and was called the Boundary Layer Control System. Today, similar features can be found in the Eurofighter Typhoon splitter plate and even on the FA-18 Super Hornet. Given that these gauzing panels were featured on the YF-23, a Northrop design, we can speculate that the B-21 could make use of both an intake bump and gauzing panels to control boundary layer airflow. This could also explain the use of a smaller bump than as seen in previous aircraft designs. One more note about intakes. For comparison, the B-2 Spirit uses serrated driver plates, which would not be as stealthy as what we have seen on the B-21. Keep in mind that the B-2 is an incredibly stealthy aircraft, 
So these enhancements that are being incorporated into the B-21 should make it an incredibly low observable airplane. Another thing we can notice from these photos are the B-21's cockpit windows, which appear to be designed to eliminate seams and joints to further reduce its radar cross-section. This brings us back to the overall appearance of the radar. During the reveal back in December, it was hard to tell if the radar had a lighter coating than usual or if the lighting in the hangar was causing the skin of the airplane to appear brighter than it was. These new photos convincingly show that the aircraft color is a white or a very light gray. Lighter coatings have been making appearances on several stealth platforms recently. Over the past year, F-22 Raptors, F-35 Lightnings, and even F-117 Nighthawks have been spotted with chrome or mirror-like finishes. I've done videos on these configurations, I'll leave links in the description below. These coatings are likely some form of counter against passive tracking systems such as infrared search and track or IRST, which some claim can also detect stealth aircraft better than traditional radar. And while the coatings seen on the B-21 are not chrome, they are likely an evolution of what has been tested and represent the latest in radar absorbing material technology. Another reason for the white coatings could be an old one. For decades, some strategic bombers have been painted in anti-flash white. The thinking is that the white color is to reflect at least some of the thermal radiation from a nuclear explosion, thereby protecting aircraft and crew. There also could be anti-EMP components involved as well. One last thing regarding the lighter coatings, while there are numerous reasons for them, aviation enthusiasts such as myself can't help but wonder if this is also a subtle shout out to the YF-23 Grey Ghost. Your thoughts? Comment below. So far, in both the B-21's reveal in December and the photos released last week, we've only seen the front of the Raider. What about the rear of the aircraft? It turns out that an aircraft exhaust systems are one of the most closely guarded secrets of the Raider, and even of the 30-year-old B-2 Spirit. In fact, if you're taking pictures of a B-2 in an Air Force base, you are prohibited from taking pictures of the back of the airplane. Just don't do it. The B-21 Raider represents the latest in American technology and innovation and carries with it the strategic vision of the United States and her allies. As we learn more about this incredible aircraft, I'll continue to make videos to keep you updated. And finally, it appears that the Raider is being produced at Northrop's Palmdale facility at Plant 42. I'm sure it's just a coincidence, but some of you will appreciate the interesting choice of the number 42. If you do, comment thanks for all the fish below. If you enjoyed this video, unstealth that subscribe button and mash the bell so you don't miss a video when it comes out. The spirit of Grey Ghosts lives on in the Raider. Now you know.